Good morning, Your Honour. Good morning, Mrs. Bejoy. Uh, not so many on the line, coming on the line now. Good morning, Justice this is Peggy Good morning. from the courts. Good morning. Uh, Justice Moran, we're still just waiting uh, for Mr. Gosh to arrive. Yes, fine, no problem. Who is Jerome Jose? I think I've asked before. Is one of your team, is it, Mrs. Bejoy? Yeah. Yes, Your Honour. He is the assistant who helped helped us to put up the screen yesterday. Ah, well, give him my thanks. <laughs> I'm sure I will. Thank you. put my screen glasses on i don't need glasses but i use these for um the blue light one is looking at computers all the time so oh that's that's really impressive your honor because um you know to read without glasses is a blessing <laughs> some surgical intervention <laughs> good morning mr ghosh <clears throat> We were we were not discussing anything about the case, but uh, my um, eye protecting glasses from computer screens, since one one looks at them um, so so long and so many days of the year these times. Anyway, are you ready to proceed, Mr. Ghosh? Mr. Ghosh, you're on mute. Can't hear you. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good morning. Yeah. Yesterday I was just uh, telling. Uh, Mrs. Bijoy, that uh, I told her half actually her second name means something in our language. And today I must say the first name and second name, if you uh, translate to Bengali, I'm from Calcutta, India. So it's hoping to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there we go. On that uh, <coughs> pleasant note, we'll begin the day's proceedings. <clears throat> so are you ready to call Mr. Shakti as we've been referring to him? Yes, he's there already. Mr. Shakti is there. Mr. Shakti, is your microphone on? On. Hi. Good, good morning, uh, Your Honor. Good morning, Hilly. Uh, good morning. Yes. 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 Uh, just Mr. Shakti. Um, uh, everybody else seems to wish to affirm in these proceedings. Do you wish to affirm before you give your evidence? Yes, I wish to affirm, Your Honor. Now, just before we do this, you seem to be away from your microphone. Um, I didn't hear you very clearly that clearly then. If you can just pull your chair up to your computer or whatever it is you're using, whatever your device, uh, that's good. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, better. So will you right. listen to, to Miss Norton, who's going to administer the affirmation to you and just follow her instructions, please? Thank you, Justice Moran. Good morning, Mr. Shakti. Can I please ask you to confirm your full name and your occupation for the court's record? Uh, my full name is Shakti Chauhan. I am a strategic consultant for Snyder Prime Limited. Thank you. And Mr. Shakti, keeping your voice elevated, can you please repeat after me? I affirm. I affirm. That I will say nothing but the truth that I will say nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shakti. Now, uh, Mr. Ghosh, um, I have already given uh, certain permission for uh, evidence in chief, contrary to the usual practice, as you're aware. Um, would you like to, uh, first of all, get your witness to prove his yes. witness statements and then proceed with your limited questions that I've allowed? Yes, your Lord. So, Mr. Shakti, please come to page 474. You have uh, submitted three witness statements. And this is the first one. Page 474. Uh, I'm there. Yeah. So, in the first paragraph, you have mentioned your name, your passport number, and Emirates ID. 
kindly confirm if this passport and Emirates ID number is correct or no? No, this uh, passport number is uh, not my uh, is not my passport number. Uh, what happened was, uh, as, as you might be aware, uh, the first response was drafted by Dravacharya, who was director of Snyder uh, Prime Limited at the time uh, before you know he left the firm. Um, so uh, I changed the form, and I believe the passport number has uh, you know has not been updated. Uh, if you allow me, I would like to share my my passport number. No, is it is it there in the other witness statements? Like page 549. Let me check. 549. Yes, it's there. So this is In the correct. Is, is this the correct passport number? Yes, this is the correct passport number. Z4996113. Okay. So coming back to page 474. Did you submit this witness statement to court? Yes. So I'll take you to the last page, which is page 493. Have you found it? Yes, up there. Yeah. 493, yes. Yeah, is this the statement of truth which you have signed on 11th of January 2024? Yes. Thank you. Is the, uh, is the witness, the contents of the witness statement true and correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Coming to the second witness statement at 549. This is the second witness statement uh, submitted by you, right? Yes. The passport number, as you mentioned, is correct here. Yes. And going down below, uh, we go to the last page, which is the signature page at uh, 562. Yes. The signature as well. Yeah. The signatures in, and the statement of truth that you this is true and correct, your knowledge and belief. Have you? Is it true? Yes. OK, and the third witness statement is at page 563. <clears throat> is this the witness that third witness statement signed by you and uh, the passport number and your name? Everything is correct here. Yes, it's accurate. And the last page is at 568. Have you signed this statement of truth? And you're mentioning that this witness statement is true to your knowledge and belief? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Mr. Shakti Chauhan, I'll take you to the first witness statement again. It's page 474. First question, basic question which I'll ask you is, how did you get introduced to Mr. Sami? which is who is the claimant number two in this case? Well, um, Mr. I was, Mr. pause a moment, Mr. Ghosh, this is all contained in the witness statements. This is not necessary examination in chief. I've given you uh, and Mrs. B. Joy limited permission uh, to deal with the meaning, uh, the, the, the meaning contended for of the resolution of the 31st of December. Um, and uh, uh, unless you can persuade me that there is some reason for you to uh, lead evidence of what is already contained in the witness statements, then uh, I'm not going to do so. Uh, you you need to um, accept the binding uh, approach that we have under the rules that the witness statement stands as the evidence in chief unless the judge rules otherwise. So will you please deal with those permitted matters um, and then we'll uh, move on from that. OK, <clears throat> yes, your lordship. So the only reason why I was asking that question, because uh, Mr. Sammy had contended that 
Mr. Shakti Chauhan approached him. I do understand who approached whom is irrelevant in the context of the case, but, but it, uh, it's, it, it may be relevant, but it's all dealt with in the witness statements. Yeah, I mean, yes, but Shakti Chauhan probably I uh, do not find any statement here where he says that he did not approach, but the fact is he says that Mr. Sammy approached him. Well, but this, I, this, this will be the subject, I'm sure, of cross-examination. And Mr. This, this is the whole point of this rule that we have, that relevant materials should be in the witness statement to begin with. And then um, if they're not, if they're not dealt with or they're challenged, that is dealt with uh, on cross-examination. So um, I'm not going to permit further examination about this because it should have been in the witness statement if there's a position taken and if it's relevant and it's cross-examined too, then Mr. Shakti will have his opportunity in accordance with the rules to give his evidence about it. And you will have an opportunity to re-examine on anything that's raised in cross-examination where you don't believe, where you believe clarification or uh, exp expansion is required. Oblige, dear Lord uh, I'll not waste my time on that anymore. Mr. Yeah. Shakti Chauhan, coming to paragraph number four of your first witness statement, which is at page 475. You have okay. stated that you have stated that on 27th March, you and uh, the defendant number one entered into a joint venture for the establishment of a gold refinery on equal sharing basis. Is this statement correct? Because from the MOU, it reveals that the agreement was between you and the defendant number two. Uh, yes, the, the agreement is between uh, Sami Abu Ahmed and Sinatra Prime Limited, represented by, by me at the time. Sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing you. Your voice is breaking up. Uh, wh where are you? Is your internet connection good? <laughs> uh, am I am I uh, audible in a better way now? I've taken off my my AirPods. That is better. Is yes, that is better. All right, I, I will I will uh, proceed uh, in this format. Right. Yes. Can you repeat your answer, Mr. Shakti Chauhan? Yes, uh, the, the MOU was signed between Sami Abu Ahmad and uh, Snyder Prime Limited, represented by me at the time. Hmm. Can you briefly elaborate on the background to the MOU? Sure. Mr. Mr. Ghosh, we've just had this discussion. All of this is either should be in the witness statements or it will be a matter that will be subject to cross-examination. If you have an application to make, to lead uh, evidence in chief on any particular matter. You, you can make the application, but you must explain to me why the matter is not dealt with in the witness statements, uh, if it is not dealt with, uh, or proceed in accordance with the rules and my directions. Uh, Lordship, uh, this put in the reason for asking this question, I agree with you. This point, I mean, this point has been brought to my notice last night only that uh, the background to the MOU was an email and a draft MOU sent by the lawyer from Mr. Sami, where the word undertaking was there, which was subsequently deleted and the words were changed to advancement of gold. Of course, well, it has not been, I mean, only yesterday evening while I was discussing with Mr. Shakti, he uh, found that document. So that right, was what so, so, so are you wanting to produce a document that's not in the bundle as well? If your Lordship deems fit, we shall obviously want to produce that document because that well, document had the word undertaking, second party undertaking, which was subsequently deleted and converted to advancement of gold. Right. If right. Your Honor, Lordship, if please, uh, your Honor, if I please interfere. Yes, um, Mrs. Bijor, you may object. Yes. Yes, I would like to raise an objection to that, Your Honor, because I'm still to commence my cross. Um, of course, you know, pursuant to the cross, if Mr. Ghosh would like to reintroduce, re-examine him, he's open to do that. And he can, at that point in time, bring this request of any additional documentation to be brought in. Yes. Um, I believe, Your Honor, a request at this late hour would be prejudicial to my client to introduce new documents. Yes. Do you have anything to say in reply to that, Mr. Ghosh? Yes. If Mrs. Bijoy is saying that when I re-examine at that time, she will allow that will at least delay the process by another two hours. So I don't understand why Mr. Sammy will be prejudiced now and not then. 
Right. You want to put in a document. You've not produced the document so far to Mrs. B. Joy. We yes. are actually in the course of Mr. Shakti giving evidence. You did not even give notice last night when the document was produced or this morning uh, where it's earlier in Dubai. I'm not going to allow you to produce it at this stage. If when Mr. Shakti is cross examined, he needs to refer to it then you may make your application to produce the document and I will consider it at that stage whether it is fair and just to allow its admission. So please proceed. And by the way, Mr. Ghosh, all of this is dealt with in paragraph five of the witness statement. The, the injection of capital that uh, Mr. Shakti contends for, the 200 kilograms of gold uh, is dealt with there. So that is his evidence in chief, and that will be cross-examined to, and you will have an opportunity to re-examine. Yes, of course, and we'll go to this, paragraph five. This, and, is, this, uh, is, this is how we do things. Yes, your lordship, right. and uh, because the issue was, this is an undertaking which they are saying, so I had put in that request. Anyway, we'll proceed with paragraph five now. I will request uh, Mr. Shakti Chauhan come to paragraph five. Yes, I'm there. Yeah. So you have mentioned some exhibits here. Can you kindly take us to these exhibits and try to prove to the Honorable Court that indeed 200,000 gold was injected within the first year, financial year? Your Honor, again, I would have to interfere and raise an objection because it was made very clear that the direct examination should be restricted to clerical mistakes or corrections. And I believe the learned opposite counsel is again using this as an opportunity to bring in evidence or make clarifications to the evidence that is already led in the witness yes. statement. But Mr. Yes. Mr. Ghosh, I really must uh, stop you here. You are seeking to do what uh, was done years ago in courts where a witness was taken through his evidence in chief in every line in particular because statements were not served in advance initially and even when they were served in advance that still happened a full evidence in chief or direct <clears throat> that does not happen now in civil litigation the statements the evidence of the witnesses is served in advance it all should be here in the statements save for as mrs b joy has just pointed out any necessary connections or any application on, or as a result of any application to add some more evidence that is not there for good reason. Um, and you are not advancing any good reason why you need to go have the witness reiterate the contents of paragraph five again. I have seen and read paragraph five. I have looked at all of these exhibits which he has produced. I will weigh them in my judgment and decision in the light of cross-examination on them and in the light of your re-examination and Mr. Shakti's evidence resulting from those two processes. So I've given you permission so far only to ask Mr. Shakti uh, about the meaning of the resolution of the 31st of December uh, 2020. Um, what his intention and understanding was in concluding that uh, resolution, signing that resolution. So you had, unless you can persuade me that there is something else that you are entitled to examine in chief about, you better go to that issue and let me have Mr. Shakti's evidence on it. So yesterday, uh, Your Lordship, uh, we had a long discussion about whether it's gold or it's trading activity, whether it's being returned to uh, the investor or whoever is putting in gold, that explanation was provided by the claimants. Yes. If your Lordship allows, I'll ask Mr. Shakti to explain the same, that it is not the case from the annual financial statements. No, this is exactly what I'm talking about. He will be cross-examined about that by Mrs. B. Joy. You really need to get this clear, Mr. Ghosh, that the way this is done is you put the evidence in a statement, the statement is filed, it's cross-examined to, and then you can re-examine. Mr. Shakti is well able 
when he's cross-examined about this, to put his case, and I'm sure he will do. Let me just illustrate it very simply. Miss, Mrs. Bejoy is going to suggest to him the fundamental part of her case that he did not produce 200 kilograms of gold as investment capital, that he only produced gold for trading purposes uh, from third party connections. And he will have an opportunity to respond to that. She is under a duty to put her client's case, as you were, to Mr. Shakti. And that's when his opportunity will come to expand upon, substantiate, prove, establish his position in relation to the bringing of gold into this company. So, please, have you have you got the picture now? Because, yes, I've got it. Yes, right. I'm extreme. I apologize for this delay. So, uh, Mr. Shakti, please explain about the 20, uh, 2020 December resolution. What do you, what is the meaning and purport of that resolution? Sure. Thank you for the opportunity, Shantanu. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, 31st December uh, 2020's resolution is a continuity of the shared transfer agreement that was signed on 5th February. So it's important for us to understand uh, why was the shared transfer agreement signed and why subsequently shareholder resolutions on the date of 27th May uh, 2020, then subsequently uh, 5th July 2020, and finally 31st December 2020 were signed because they are all linked, right? They're all linked. So it, yes, they're, they're all linked. All linked. Mr. Shakti, just, proceed, just, proceed slowly, yeah. Mr. Shakti. Yes, you are you are gabbling, Mr. Shakti, um, very quickly. You need to, I know you want to get this off your chest, uh, and you will have plenty of opportunity to do so uh, during the course of the morning, but please speak slowly. Um, you mentioned there so fast that I couldn't even note them, the two resolution, two resolutions in the course of the year following the share transfer agreement in May, I think, and... Uh, was it September? Whatever dates. Tell me the dates again. Uh, 27th of May, 2020. Yes. And then 5th of July, 2020. Yes. These were the two resolutions that set the path for the 31st December 2020's resolution uh, to be signed. And under what, what circumstances they were signed. Slow that, down. That a... Slow, slow down. Please. Right. These are the resolutions which set the circumstances, you said, for the resolution of December the 31st. Yes, December 31st. Therefore, it becomes uh, uh, important to understand why were these resolutions signed. These resolutions were a continuation of the share transfer agreement signed on 5th February, to, uh, 5th February 2020. Right. So th they are all connected. And finally, uh, I would like to say, why was the share transfer agreement of 5th February 2020 signed when we already had a non-binding MOU uh, uh, that was uh, in a way uh, leading the path for the operations of the company and things were working in uh, in a profitable manner, which can be seen uh, from uh, you know uh, the performance of the company in 2018, where it made a net profit of $300,000, 2019. Mr. Shakti, Mr. Shakti, you're making a speech You've been asked a question. What was the meaning and intent of the resolution? Uh, you are not at liberty to go back over all the matters covered in your witness statement. Uh, please answer the question. You've explained to me that the uh, resolution has to be understood in the context of two prior resolutions and the share transfer agreement. I have that point. I will look at those resolutions and the, obviously the share transfer agreement is to the fore in my mind. Um, but will you please focus on what happened in December uh, 2020 uh, that led to the signing of this resolution and what is your uh, understanding of its meaning? So the resolution of 31st December 2020 was signed during the first week of January 2021. And if I did not sign that on behalf of Snyder Prime Limited, Sam Precious Metal would have been a bankrupt company. And I can explain pause, pause, that. Pause there. Mr. Shakti, you need to go slowly. Yes. 
So you say it would have been bankrupt if you hadn't signed. Yes. And this is why it's important for us to, if your honor allows, read the 27th uh, uh, May 2020's resolution. If I could take you there. Yes, you can, you can uh, refer to a resolution that you say led to the December resolution. So which page is that at? You can help him, Mr. Gosh, yeah, on this yes. by giving a page number. Yes, you know, she. Should have found the index. Yes. Ms. B. Mrs. B. Joy can help as well. Yes, it is on page number 87 of the bundle, Your Honor. The Thank you very much. 5th of February 2020. Page number? 87. Uh, that's 5th February. I'm looking for uh, 27th May's resolution. It's 306 of the bundle. 306. 306. Right. Thank you. Uh, so here, when we when we look at this resolution, I would like to take uh, your honor directly to point one point four and at one point three at page number three zero seven. Yes, I have it. Right. So if if you read point number three, what it says is the dividend of Rosie Sun and Sami Abu Ahmed till June two thousand twenty will be deployed back in full as an on gold consignment at 5% charges per annum. What, what, what this basically means is a dividend distribution from the company that was happened. Slow down, and slow down, slow down. So Yes, a dividend distribution. A dividend distribution uh, is under consideration, and this dividend distribution would be paid to the shareholders, right? And yes. uh, and and what uh, it is being suggested is uh, that all the dividend that is due to Snyder would be paid to Rosieson's affiliate. Now, in order to understand this particular line. That is why reading the share transfer agreement becomes important. But before before addressing that point, here what what it means slow is down, Mr. Mr. Shakti. You know, if you give your evidence in this gabbling fashion, I cannot possibly understand it or give weight to it. You have to control yourself and slow down. Uh, you know, this is your case. This is in your interest. You must follow my instructions, please, okay. in your own interest. Okay, Your Honor. So slow down. Just, I, I can understand. I can understand you will be anxious and concerned and want to get your story across about this resolution of the 31st of December. So please speak slowly. This dividend, which is recorded here, of Roy, Rosie Sun and Mr. Sammy till June 2020 will be deployed back in full as an on-call goal consignment at 5% charges per annum. Right. So what what comes from that? What about the you were you were talking about the, the SPL, the Snyder dividend? Right. If if we if we consider this along with the share transfer agreement, what was agreed as part of the share transfer agreement is that um, uh, uh, Snyder Prime would receive half of the dividend it's owed, and the remaining half would be paid to Rosie Sun's affiliate. But what is being considered over here is that all of the dividend would be paid to Rosie Sun's dividend. And that is acceptable, right? Yeah. Additionally, what, in, what is being said is the dividend owed 
to Rosie Sun and Semi Abu Ahmed would be taken would be taken from them and they would put it back into the company. The question is why would they be putting back gold into the company? And that is mainly to provide working capital. Right, which which is which is which is at the core of this case. Point number one point four says, in case Rosie Sun or Mr. Sammy decided to keep the consignment in company post thirty first December two thousand twenty, they are entitled to review the consignment charges, subject to approval of all partners. The, the charges being the charges being the five percent. Um, interest per annum on the, the the gold that we're talking about here, um, <clears throat> where or cash in lieu of gold as capital deployed uh, in full as an on-call gold consignment. Correct? Yes. Right. So so you say that last point four sets the scene for the 31st December resolution. Exactly. Your Honor. Right now, move on then to the next resolution that you mentioned. If you want to refer to that 27th yes. of, of uh, I'm sorry, the uh, 5th of July. What page is that? Eighty seven, right? Eighty seven. Um, I'm afraid, Your no. Honor, that uh, resolution is not in the bundle. It's my understanding. Right. There is so, an extract in the POC, but um, the resolution as such is not there in the bundle. There's an extract where? In the particulars of claim. Right. Well, let's see if that is the relevant part. Take me to the particulars of claim. That, Page number 41, Your Honor. 41. Paragraph number 41 on the particulars of claim. I'll give you the reference to the page number. You know, I stand corrected. It is paragraph number 31. 31. Page. Sorry, sorry page number 31 and paragraph number. I think it's better that we refer to page number 31. Thank you, uh, Council. So, so sorry. Which paragraph are you talking about? Well, um, Your well, Honor, the problem with the paragraph is it's 41. OK, it's a continuation on page number 30. And towards the end of the page, Your Honor will see the reference to uh, the resolution dated 5th of July 2020. Yes, I see that um, <clears throat> on page 30 of the bundle. So Correct. just let, just get, let, give Mr. Shakti a moment to read this. Uh, recounting of the resolution of the 5th of July and uh, see whether he can make his point by reference to these particulars. Just read paragraph 41. Yes, Your, Your Honor, uh, the, the, the point I would, would like to address is in the last para, sub para of point number 41. Yes, which highlights, which is on page number 31, which highlights the effective dividend distribution. Yes. As we can see, if we were to add the dividends paid to Rosie Sun, which is 379,000, Sami Abu Ahmed, 3.6 million, and finally in fourth line, Rosie Sun again, 1.8 million, this amounts to something in excess of 100 kgs of gold. Right. Second last line states first defendant, which is being implied is Snyder Prime Limited. Uh, to put it on the record, this money was never received in any of our bank accounts, but that is not necessarily the matter uh, I'm trying to address right now. We will we will get to the point of what was why was this distribution connected to the 31st December 2020 resolution. So if, if, if you read this along with the resolution, we just uh, scanned uh, a sign on 27th of May 2020, roughly, uh, I would say 3.6, 1.8 is uh, 4, 5.4, roughly $5.7 million has been paid to the claimants, which they injected 
back into the company at 5% per interest, uh, 5% uh, interest per year. Just, just pause a moment. The first figure there, Rosie's son, 379-534-92. Um, what do you say that represents? I suspect that represents uh, 10%. I, I would think half of 10% consultancy fees that would have been calculated. I suspect what the claimants uh, have done is they said uh, whoever brings 200 kg is eligible for 10% uh, of company's net profits as, as consultancy fees. Well, that's, they decided that's what you were supposed to be getting uh, under the MOU arrangements um, if you had invested 100 kilograms of gold uh, or 200 kilograms of gold, um, there is a fee payable. Just let me find yes, it. Sir. So do you, complain, do you complain about Rosie's son rec receiving uh, that amount, $379,534 or not? Yes, Your Honor. The reason I complain is uh, the MOU that has been submitted to uh, to your lordship is not complete. The last annexer, which uh, my counsel addressed, I believe, day before yesterday, has not been uploaded, and the last page of the last uh, of annexer three addresses the capital requirements and the financial plan. Yes, I've read that. Um, I got this yesterday, so um, I, I understand that. The capital investment there is specified as AED 7.2 million. Yes, which is approximately $1.95 million. Snyder uh, uh, invested 2 million. So th that was sufficiently taken care of. The, the last, the last uh, paragraph on the last page of Annexure 3 su suggests and states proposed sources of financing, right? Yes, I've seen that too. Which is listed as personal resources, which implies any direct contribution from Snyder Prime Limited. Second is bank loans. Uh, in case of a startup, banks don't extend financing. So a financial institution was seeded and sponsored by Snyder Prime Limited, which raised $18 million. And that liquidity was arranged to the trading companies related to SAP. Sorry, you're going oh. fast again. <clears throat> Slow down. You were saying <clears throat> bank loans. You were talking about bank loans <clears throat> and that something was arranged. What was arranged? So bank loans, if need be. Bank loans are not available to startup companies because of the delicate uh, capital structure that they have. In this particular case, Snyder Prime Limited seeded and sponsored a DIFC based investment fund, which functioned as the financial institution that arranged capital for gold trading companies associated with Sam Precious Metals. Where is this all dealt with in your statement? You've not dealt with any of this in your statement, have you? It is in the MOU, Your Honor, this particular part, if, if uh, 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 you would allow me uh, to take you there. Do tell me where you say this is included in the MOU. What you're yes, telling me now about uh, <coughs> the financial Sna Snyder seeding an investment fund to serve <coughs> as the financial institution. Yes, uh, but before I take you there, the last point is says investors, as you would have noted. Yes, which refers to third party invested investors that Snyder Prime Limited sourced down, and used, which refers to third party investors that Snyder Prime Limited sourced and arranged for Sam Precious Metals. What has been clearly documented in the annual financial statements of Sam is only personal resources, which is uh, liquidity arranged from Snyder Prime Limited and a, th a third party capital arranged from investors such as Al Asil, Al Shahir, and Vin Gold. Even to the. So, so just pause there for a moment. Pause there for a moment. You are saying then <clears throat> that the 
uh, investments, which the claimant contends is trading capital from Al Shahia and Vingold is in fact exactly the same as the 4.9 million from Al Azil. Yes, Your Honor. Right. Just, is... let me, just let me make a note of that, please. <clears throat> right. Now, what do you want to take me to in the memorandum of association? Let me just allow to. Can you allow me to open MOU? It's a 742 page number. 742. 42. Right. So I will take your lordship to. To... It's at internal uh, page 742 conditions. Yeah. Page 742. At the bottom conditions. Uh, <clears throat> So here, if, if your lordship is there, yes. then, then I the parties acknowledge and agree that completion of the proposed transaction will be conditional on the satisfaction of the following conditions. The establishment of Gulf Precious Metals Limited, which will be incorporated in Dubai International Financial Center as a qualified investor fund. Second, establishment of P79 Capital Limited, which will be incorporated in the DIFC as a regulated QIF manager. And finally, the execution of the definitive agreements as defined below. Now, however, as, as we are aware that definitive agreements were never defined, the efforts by Snyder Prime Limited ensured that the liquidity and working capital arranged through the three mechanisms, which is A, personal resources, uh, second, through no, no bank loans, however, establishment of this financial institution. And finally, through third party investors, which consist of liquidity arranged from Al Asil, Al Shahir, and Bin Gold, ensured that there was always in excess of 200 kg as discussed. Now, as I understand, uh, uh, your honor has uh, uh, addressed. Uh, 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 my counsel to not refer to the specific point where the argument of undertaking is being debated by the opposition's counsel. But yes. if I was allowed to submit, you can, you can speak to it if it is relevant to how we arrived at the 31st of December resolution. Yes. Uh, I'll let you tell me about this change of wording. <clears throat> The original, uh, the MOU, uh, before we started the, the joint venture, the, um, the memorandum of understanding was hotly debated between Sami, his legal counsel by the name of uh, uh, Barney Almazar from gulflaw.com, Dino Scandales, who was representing Snyder Prime Limited, and myself. The argument was specifically around a clause. As, as you're aware, the current clause is gold advancement. Sami's counsel wanted this to be changed to second party undertaking. This notion is well addressed on an email dated 22nd of March 2018, where ultimately the claimant's counsel accepted our wording. Right. Which I, I like. I, right. I'm going to stop you there. I've got that point. <clears throat> I have to interpret this uh, MOU. 
you've uh, said that where it says advancement of gold on page four, um, what you what the other side wanted in pre-contract negotiations, and there's a there's a legal rule about me considering pre-contractual negotiations, which I'm not going to deal with now with you. It's a matter for the lawyers to deal with at the end. But the thrust of your evidence is that instead of advancement of gold, the other side wanted undertaking as to gold provision. But the words that I am interpreting, the whole of the agreement, including those words, advancement of gold, is the first line, the second party shall provide 200 kilograms of gold. So I have your point that I should take into account this <clears throat> pre-contractual negotiations concerning whether it was advancement of gold or undertaking to provide gold. I have that point. Now, please move to the resolution of the 31st of December. I've given you an awful lot, lot of latitude to go beyond your statement. So please tell us when you got to the 31st of December, what you understood uh, to be the meaning and intent of that resolution. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. To answer your, uh, your question, you also asked me about two elements of dividend payment that we saw earlier. And you asked me why, what was my objection to the first line? <clears throat> yes. To answer that effectively, Your Honor, I would like to take you to just to explain the role of JD Company Consultant on page number 745. Where? Yes, yes that's, I'm sorry, that's exactly what I was uh, recalling, this provision. Thank you for drawing that to my attention. Now get to the 31st of December, please, without further ado. Right, so, so this point states, whoever arranges uh, is entitled to 10%. So, so coming back to the, the original point, what we saw in the extract of the 5th July resolution says that a dividend uh, and, and consultancy fees in amount of 5.8 million US dollars was paid to Rosie Sun and Sami Abu Ahmed. <coughs> we read that together with 27th of May's resolution. It was suggested that they would deploy this capital in the refinery as working capital on, on charges of 5%. Right? So, so what, what has been stated is who is entitled, if you look in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in terms of JB Company Consulting, it addresses Shakti Chauhan and Shakti Chauhan's uh, uh, annual compensation is, has been deducted every year based upon the charges that the company pays. So for the year of 2018, 2019 and 2020. Wait, wait a minute, Mr. Shakti. I thought you were going to follow my instruction to go to the 31st of December memo uh, resolution. Please, will you do so? OK, Your Honor. So just just before that, the last. No, line. not just before that, Mr. Shakti. I have given you more liberty than you are entitled to in the procedures we adopt in this court. Your evidence should be contained in your witness statements and you will have an opportunity to respond to cross-examination that is going to be put to you shortly. Now, just answer this question, which was the one I permitted. What do you say was the meaning and intent of the 31st December resolution by reference to its terms? 31st December yeah. resolution, if Snyder did not sign it, the 100 kg of gold th that was uh, earned as dividend and then was further redeployed at 5% interest rate would be taken back. Now, if you look at the finances of the company, early in the year, 100%, most of the dividends had been paid out. What was the capital base of the company? Only the $2 million that originally Snyder had provided. Slow All down, slow down, slow down. The Earlier capital base of the company, you say, was only the $2 million that Snyder had provided. Had, had provided. All the other capital had been drained out as dividend and was directly uh, ex uh, taken by the other shareholders. Here, while the entry is made that payments were made to uh, Rockbank account of Snyder, 
that is a dispute for a different day the reality is all this money was taken by the other shareholders which they loaned back to the company and what they asked snider to do was if snider does not sign 31st december resolution if if your your honor recollects the last line said uh, post 31st december 2020 the interest rate would be reviewed and here that's why you know before we go to the 31st december resolution i would like like to go back to that last line of the 27th may's resolution you've already puts... been mr shakti you've already been there i've already seen that so uh, the, the the sum of your evidence seems to be that if you had not signed this agreement the company would have gone bankrupt yes because the on the gold that was redeployed by the other shareholders would have been taken out had that been done now imagine the situation there is no capital base in the company the the liquidity arranged by the other shareholders that is taken out which reduces the the uh, available capital to less than half of it in that case the only capital available to sam refinery is the 100 kg arranged by rosie sun as part of the share transfer agreement if the company is capital base is dropping so uh, aggressively the other party has extended a loan financing would take that money out as well in that particular case if snider did not agree to the terms of the other shareholders and as we know it has been established at twice the dividend basically 31st december 2020's resolution allowed them to engineer an annual interest rate in excess of 120% by giving this capital to the company and they threatened that if snider prime does not sign this resolution they would take that capital base out as right, it just, evidence just stop there mr shakti you've uh, you've had uh, ample opportunity to explain your version of this in chief you're now going to be cross examined by ms bijoy and will you please not make speeches just answer her questions okay your honor Mrs. B. Joy. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Would you please <laughs> confirm that um, you are giving this witness statement for yourself on your personal behalf, as well as for the defendant number one? Yes. Would you agree with me that currently you do not hold any shares in defendant number one, nor are you a director of defendant number one? Yes, I'm not. Are you representing defendant number one in your capacity as a consultant for them in this litigation? Yes. But you used to be a hundred percent owner of the defendant number one. during the years 2018 to 2021 yes also i was director of uh, no 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 uh, um, i will i will get to you let me ask you sure, the questions sure. and you can answer me as and when i put the question to you thank you you have prior experience in gold trading and gold related investment activities right Yes, and uh, you would agree that that's more than for a decade. That is. That is more than approximately ten years of prior experience dealing in gold and and um, gold related investment activities. Yes. And you have multiple entities trading gold in UAE and abroad. No. but you had entities wherein you had ownership dealing in gold trading yes but at the moment you do not have any entities that does gold trading no would you agree with me that uh, gold is a liquid and volatile commodity 
and the price is highly influenced by various market factors. Yes. You agree with me that you have met Mr. Sami many times while he was with Al Etihad Gold Refinery as part of your business or trade. Yes. So you knew Sami before signing the MOU? Yes. You would also agree with me that uh, you have met Mr. Sami multiple times before signing the MOU. I have known him since 2016. You, um, I would request you to please state the answer and then move on yes. with your explanation. So you have met yes. him multiple times. Yes, thank you. And you've known him since 2016. Yes. So during your discussions, you have come to know that Mr. Sami possesses technical know-how and has more than 20 years of experience operating and managing refineries in the UAE? Uh, he has circulated his CV, which mentions something to that effect. No, I'm not talking about the CV. From your, ex from your discussions with him, what impression did you get about Mr. Sami's experience operating and managing refineries? Like... Yes, he's worked at several refineries. He worked in the capacity of, uh, I believe, a production manager at uh, uh, Al Etihad, and before that at another refinery. Okay, thank you. So when you met him, um, Mr. Sami has shared his vision about Sam Precious Metal, which I may please refer to an extra number three of the MOU, which is not in the bundle, but it is an additional document for the court's record submitted by the, by the uh, opposite counsel in an email yesterday. And if I read from the MOU, annexure number three, Mr. Sami's vision was a vision of connecting the world precious metal producing countries with the world precious metal consuming countries by establishing 13 refineries, hallmark centers, testing laboratories and more than five to 10 years within more than, sorry, and uh, more within five to 10 years and the head office to be in Dubai city of gold. So yes. did Mr. Yeah, thank you. So it is seeing this huge potentials of this vision and venture that you have decided to become the 50% shareholder in Sam Precious Metal? Yes, as an investor, we believe the, uh, in, in the prospects and that's why we invested. So you were informed by Mr. Sami that um, he would consider only those potential partners who can bring 2 million dollars in share capital and provide a gold working capital of 200 kg for a term of five years. We were negotiating the specifics uh, of the agreement. What was uh, established was also in an email where this an extra three no, was I'm sent. No, I'm asking like, um, did you know about these two criteria or the requirements? Were you informed about $2 million and a working capital requirement of 200 kg? Yes. to be available yes. for a term of five years. Yes, yes, that's reflected in the MOU. Sorry, that last um, answer you gave, that's what's in the MOU, I think you said, did you? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Would you also agree with me that uh, Mr. Sami had multiple proposals from other inter interested investors who could bring both cash and long-term working capital? That is inaccurate. I think I've read that in the, the filing that you have made. Uh, well, well, and... does, just a moment. 
does this witness know uh, what um, offers, what approaches um, <clears throat> Mr. Sami might have had from other people? This is not a profitable line of cross-examination. <clears throat> Unless he was told, um, you can ask him that question. Yes, Your Honor. So let me rephrase that question for you. Um, so whether Mr. Sami did discuss with you about potential offers from other interested parties when you were discussing about the joint venture? No, that's inaccurate. Thank you. You agree with me that you have signed a MOU on the 27th of March 2018? Yes. And you have also deposited an amount of 400,000 dirhams on the same day, that is on the 27th of March, which is on the hearing bundle page number 332. Do you want to refer to the page number 332? Yes, the, the voucher uh, uh, I received was for that day. However, the cash that I paid uh, to Mr. Sami was uh, was before that, about a week before. So the, okay. the voucher date is that day. That's how it was executed. So that was towards the share capital, the contribution towards the share capital, the 400,000 dirhams. Yes. What do you mean it was an advance on the 2 million or what? What are you suggesting, uh, he Mrs. Uh, Benjamin? He, he, Sorry, Mr. Vijay, you can go. Yes. Um, Your Honor, um, so, so Mr. Shakti, the point that I wanted to clarify was this was a contribution made towards the share capital, part payment for the share capital. And you clarified by saying you had already made an advance payment previously before that. What I said is, 400,000 dirhams was paid to Mr. Sami before 27th of March, although the, the, the transaction was signed on 27th of March. Okay, and okay, got it. I stand cl corrected because I got it the other way. Yes, so you're saying that although the voucher is dated, sorry, let, Your Honor. Let him give his evidence about this 400,000 AED. What was it? You've told me when you gave it to him that it was paid before this voucher date. Um, what did it represent was it what was it in part payment for if anything we we were coming towards uh, the final version of the mou uh, no, we felt there was no 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 that's no i was just talking about this 400000 aed uh, <clears throat> part payment it, it says here, it says as advance against his partnership contribution in our company as per our agreement with him so what was it going to? The two million that you were paying? Two million dollars. Yes, it was two million dollars. Right. It was an advanced contribution in AED on the two million payable under the MOU. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So, Mr. Shakti, you would agree with me that accordingly, the first defendant was made a 50% shareholder of the first claimant. Yes. Would you also agree with me that um, the first claimant started its operations on May 2018? No, if you allow me to explain that further, do I mm -hmm. have the permission? Yes, you do. Yes, yes. You do. So um, Sam, uh, uh, Sam was a company established on a trade license at that point, and the intention was to kick off the Sam Dubai refinery, right? However, when you set up a refinery, which is basically a factory, it takes several months. You have to order machinery, you have to make payments, and so on and so forth. What was decided, what was uh, suggested by Sami was he wanted to purchase a refinery operating out of Sharjah, which was called Sun Gold LLC. That is the refinery that Sam Dubai acquired. So after this acquisition, the first gold bars that came out from Sam as a brand came out from Sam Sharjah. So 
uh, Sam Dubai became operational during, I think, August or September. But the acquisition of uh, Sun Gold Company and allowing us to rename that to Sam Sharjah allowed us to make gold production from Sharjah under the Sam brand. We were all eager to get, uh, you know, the gold bars out there in the market. Right. So, so, so sorry, Mrs. Vidjo, I just want to clarify sorry. that. The Sharjah refinery was part of SAM and it produced gold for SAM in May 2018. Is that the position? Yes, I think I think somewhere in May. Uh, I'm not uh, precise on the dates, but uh, yeah. it was SAM's Sharjah that was producing the, the first gold box. Right. Thank you very much. That's all I need to know, Mrs. B. Joy. Carry on. Um, Mr. Shakti, would you agree with me that um, the first claimant started servicing clients, including that of the first defendants, affiliates, and uh, customers from August 2018, when the, the facility started operational in Dubai? Yes. Do you also agree with me that uh, as per the annual financial statements of 2018, which is on the hearing bundle page number 782, the first claimant recognizes defendant number one as a 50% shareholder? Yes. Are we looking, sorry, Mrs. B. George, you, are you taking the witness to financial statements? Yes, Your Honor. It's on the, it's, it's annual financial statement for the year 2018. And what page? It's on page number 782. Thank you. There is a list of shareholders. And uh, this is the confirmation that I was taking the witness through. Mrs. B. Joy, none of this and a lot of the questions you've asked so far are not in dispute. Um, th these are matters which are recorded. The same rule applies to you in cross-examination, that you do not have to cross-examine to matters which are not in dispute. This is well-known, plain as a pike staff, obvious. Please focus on matters that are in issue and the issues that, that I am determining. I'm grateful for the guidance, Your Honor. I will be getting to that, Your Honor. This is just laying the foundation. Well, the foundation's well and truly laid in documents. So let's get to the core of the dispute, please. Grateful, Your Honor. Mr. Shakti, would you agree with me that um, the defendant number one has arranged a currency loan of US dollars, 4.9 million, which was agreed as a cash equivalent of 100 kg working capital as per the MOU. 4.9 million dollar is in excess of 100 kgs. That is one but, of the commitments. Standard, okay, but number you one. Know, before you go to that, I sorry, you're speaking across each other. Please repeat your answer there, Mr. <coughs> Shakti. Uh, I think I heard you say that 4.9 million dollars is in excess of 100 kilograms of gold in value. Um, but what we've been told by other witnesses, and tell me if you agree with this, because you were not actually producing physical gold as uh, in discharge of your obligations, it is contended under the MOU, you produced cash with a margin to, uh, to cover the fluctuations in the price of gold. That is uh, inaccurate, Your Honor. Right. Um, what's, your, what's your account of this then? For a refinery, cash and gold are equivalent. For a refinery, cash and gold are equivalent. Uh, and uh, $4.9 million of liquidity uh, that we arranged through Alasil Jewelry, if 
we were to look at uh, uh, the the year end price, I think it would be in excess of 100 kgs. And it was up to the uh, uh, borrower, which is in this case of the working capital facility, Sam to decide how they wanted to keep it. So Sam could decide how they wanted to. They could decide how they can keep it. And if you allow me, I can try to quickly calculate how many gold grams is $4.9 million equivalent to. We, we, uh, don't as, need, we, we don't need that degree of precision. You are saying that this is in excess of the value of 100 kilograms of gold at the time. But yes, you are. The, the key point is that you were providing this, um, as I understand your answer, in discharge of what you had uh, your obligation under the MOU to provide 100 kilograms of gold. This is the first 100 kilograms of gold uh, that you were required to provide. Is that right? Yes, yes Your Honour. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. B. Joy. Yes, um, Mr. Shakti, um, this liquidity was brought in on the month of September 2018. I am not uh, too familiar with the dates, but uh, as I know, by the year end of 2018, it was recorded on, on the balance sheet of the firm, of, the, of, okay. of Sam Precious Metals. Noted. And uh, this is arranged through a third, third party called Al Azil Jewelry? Yes. As Mrs. Per, uh, Mrs. B. Joy, we have this. Clear, undisputed, plain as a pike staff. Please get to yes, the matters sure. in issue. Mr. Shakti, if I may please refer you to the hearing bundle page reference number 792. which is an extract from the annual financial statement to 2018. Right. And if you were to please focus on the item convertible loans. Yes. Do you agree that the liquidity arranged through Al Asil is reflected as item number Three currency loan from third party with an entry of 4.9 million. Yes. And if I may please ask you to refer to the item just above that, which is an entry for US dollar 1.041711. It is showing as a contribution from a related party. Yes. That's not a prime limited contribution. So uh, personal resources. Sorry, come again. That's Snyder Prime. I had I had the answer. Snyder Prime's contribution, personal resources. Okay. Yeah, got it. Thank you, Your Honor, for the clarification. Would you agree with me that this is a short term trade loan from Snyder Prime? No, that's inaccurate. If you allow me to explain, I can take you where the short term uh, uh, gold from supplies is reflected in this balance sheet. If I may because please I think ask you one or two questions and then you can clarify. If I may please take sure. you through the financial statement of year 2020. Page. Page number 841. Entry number 14, dealing with the item convertible loans. Uh, what page are we looking at? 841, right? 41. Yes. You would agree with me that the US dollar 
1041711 is not reflected under the convertible loan. It is not reflected here, yes. You were taking him to item 14. Yes, your Honor. Convertible loans. And it, it is also shown there that the 4.9 million uh, has been paid off. Does he accept that it was paid off? Do you accept that? Do you see item 14? Yes, Your Honor. I suspect it was replaced by 4.9 million from Rosie Sun uh, yes. as part the share transfer agreement. So yes. that should have been added somewhere uh, on, on the balance sheet. But you confirm that uh, the amount is not reflected in the 2020 um, entries. Yes, uh, as a part of share transfer agreement, that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was taken care of. No, with specific um, reference to page number 841 in the financial statement, do you see that entry in 2020 of 4.9 million? I see that in 2019. I do not see that in 2020 under item number 14, convertible loans. Thank you. Could I also refer to item number 12, subsection B, on the same page? There is a reference to convertible loans to Snyder Primate Limited. Prime Limited. Yes. And um, you would agree with me that the sum of 1,041711 is not reflected under the, for the financial year 2020. Yes, not reflected in 2020, reflected under 2019. Yes. So which would mean that this amount of 1.041711 one one is repaid back to Snyder. Yes, the contribution from personal resources has been settled. Yes. So you would also agree with me that um, The amount of 1.041711 was for a short-term trade. No, it was a convertible loan that stayed on the balance sheet of the firm for the years 2018, 2019, and as a part of the share transfer agreement was settled in 2020. Okay, thank you. If I may please now refer you to hearing bundle page reference number 792. 792, yes. Yeah, that's again um, extract from the annual financial statement for 2018. Yes. There is an entry recorded as go loan from third party and the amount reflected as 2,050,198. There are two numbers here. 49,750 is mm -hmm. the quantity in gold grams, which implies this gold loan has been deposited in form of 50 kg of gold, 49,750 grams. What the next entry, the, the next point is saying is, this gold loan equivalent to 49.75 kgs is equivalent to two million fifty thousand one ninety eight dollars as of that day. This is a typical practice that is followed when a line item 
uh, is reflecting on the balance sheet in the form of gold or silver. First, you put their, their grams and then you put their uh, value as of that day. Okay, thank you. Would you agree with me that this is a gold trade facility provided by Al Sahir Jewelry? It is not a gold trade facility. Gold trade facilities are reflected under trade payables. Right below point number three, you can see trade payables. Point number uh, two is unfixed gold from suppliers. So when, when precious metal traders deposit their gold in a trade account, that is reflected here. Unfixed gold from suppliers, as you can see, it has two numbers right next to it. First one is 595,134. This implies the number of grams, the quantity of grams of gold, which is 595 kilos, 0.134 kg from the uh, trading accounts. So the, the trade account that you refer to is reflected under trade payables. The convertible loans, the loan facility, which is the working capital, is reflected under point number three. And if you see, all of them have the word loan, no trade, right, or no suppliers. So if you add the three loans under uh, convertible uh, point number three, First entry is in form of gold, equivalent to $2 million approximately. Second entry is currency loan, equivalent to $1.041 million. Third entry is currency loan, equivalent to $4.9 million. This is corresponding to the facility from uh, Alassi. If you add all of these three loans, that is equivalent to $7.9 million. So th these are not trade. Trades are under trade payables, uh, second line item. Okay. But you agree with me that um, the facility of 2.0205019 was provided by Al Sahir Jewelry. I am not precise who the counterparty was, but what I've heard uh, in this case is most likely it was uh, it was Al Sahir, because I came across some convert yeah uh, some convertible uh, notes, uh, and and that's what I think one of your witnesses was also uh, acknowledging. But you don't accept it was um, a uh, trading loan because you say if it was, it would be under trade payables like those other figures there, unfixed gold from suppliers and unfixed silver from suppliers. Yes, Your Honor. It would not have the word loan next to it. Right. Uh, so, so what I've heard is in this trial, uh, a suggestion that, that a loan was put on the balance sheet on 1st, I think 31st of December and taken back on 5th of January. If between 31st of December and 5th of January is approximately six days of which three are holidays, that would be gold in the trade payable account. It would be what, I'm sorry, gold? It would be unfixed gold from suppliers, yes. which is reflected under item number four, trade payables. Very well. Yes, thank you. If I may, uh, Mr. Shakti, if I may please ask you to refer to bundle page reference number 817. Okay, I'm there. Do you agree with me that the amount of 2 million, just hold on a minute, I'll just get to that number. 050198 is not reflected in 2019. Sorry, what is the number that you are saying should not be appearing here? The number you that you were to? the number you were looking at on the previous page of 2.050 million. Yes, that, uh, that, that's not here that I'm not the, unable to see. That you uh, don't know but are inclined to accept came from Al Shahir jewelry. 
Yes. Yes. Thank you. I, I if if your honor allows. Yes. I suspect your uh, the, the council's reference is to point number sixteen, under other payables and provisions, where advance from third party is reflecting two million dollars. If you'd allow no, me to explain. Uh, Mr. Shakti, if, if I may please interfere. My question was on point number fifteen, convertible loans. Yes. Because if you recall, under uh, the Mrs. B. Mrs. B. Joy, I will allow the witness to expand on his answer. What do you wish to say about point sixteen? Uh, two things you yes. One is price of gold fluctuates. So any time a facility is in form of gold grams, the price can move up or can go down. So if in 2018, you are seeing a facility of two million fifty six thousand dollars. The price in 2019 could have changed. So that is one response to it. Second, I have a copy of well, you, you have a copy of uh, the, the financial statement. I also have a copy of the draft that was prepared before the 2019, the, the, the one that you are seeing. And in that draft copy, this reference is to uh, investment from Win Gold. It is on, on WhatsApp messages. This has been shared by Dhruva Acharya and Sami Abu Ahmed. And in their draft, this specific $2 million refers to SAM investment slash win gold. If your honor would allow me to submit that copy of draft, uh, it would help explain what this $2 million is. Well, just pause a moment there. This will have to be the subject of an application by Mr. Go Mr. Ghosh to uh, admit a document that's not in the bundle. <clears throat> um, but let me get your evidence clear for the moment. You are saying that this item in 16 on the page we're looking at of 2 million um, represents a capital contribution that was procured through Vingold. Yes, Your Honor. But because of the price fluctuation in gold between the two years, instead of being 2.050 and change million, it is now precisely 2 million. What I'm saying, Your Honor, is this is definitely an investment from Wingold. Now, Wingold could have chosen to either invest in gold grams or it could have chosen to invest in currency. Had it chosen to invest in currency, it would reflect in the form of the dollars contributed to the account of SAM. The, the draft copy that I'm uh, referring to, which uh, uh, I hope Mr. Shantanu is able to make an application for, it specifically has an entry saying, $2 million from, uh, says Sam investment slash win gold. And is that under item 16 in the draft or under item 15? It So if you allow me to quickly open that draft that I have with myself. That is reflected in the copy that I have in item number 17 under convertible loans so the draft copy that was shared by all the uh, shared with all the directors in item number 17 it's uh, 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 saying convertible loans it has two entries first one is convertible loans from third parties equivalent to 4.9 million dollars i suspect this is uh, related to alaseed and the second entry says win gold slash sam investment $2 million. And if you combine both of them, it is equivalent to $6.9 million. Right. So that is a draft. What date is the draft um, shared on? Sh sh Six what, what, yes. It, so, solid question, Your Honor, because see, it is shared on 6th January 2020. It is shared six days after 2019 year end. At that point of time, the directors were debating there are entries in in the in the in the annual financial statement where they should be going so in the draft again which is shared six days after close of the financial year it shows this two million dollar with the name uh just open it again win gold slash sam investment but, but does see. it so i'm sorry um does it show first of all it's under an item which is then numbered 17 convertible loans in the draft the numbers have changed in the final version it's received by you on the 6th of January, as you've just told me. Um, and uh, it is um, 
obviously not in the finalised accounts under item 15 that we're looking at, but um, under item 16, it's a, it's a different category of um, entries, other payables and provisions. Advance from third party is there, 2 million. Um, if it had not been paid off on your account of things, as I understand it, it would have remained at whatever figure under convertible loans in the final accounts. You agree? Yes, You're not Your yes. yes, Your Honor. And, 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 I can and it, it's yeah. not there in the final accounts for the year ended 31st of December 2019. So that would suggest that whatever it was, it was paid off by the time the final accounts were prepared. Do you agree? No, Your Honor. W what I'm suggesting is the label was changed, and I will explain the reason why the label was changed instead of showing SAM investment slash win gold. In the final version, it reflects advance from third party. And the reason for that is win gold is a company that is owned by a gentleman who reflects negatively on void check. He, who and who does gold. what? Sorry, who reflects what? Who reflects negatively on void check? So when when I'm Sam, not I'm not, I'm really not understanding you. He reflects negatively on what was the word you used? World, world check. So void check is a system that is used to do KYC of personnel. So anytime you onboard a client, anytime you onboard a client, or anytime you open an account for a client, you are supposed to do a KYC check of the individual. Who is the promoter of a company? Who is the owner? Who is he related to? To ensure that uh, you, you are you are satisfying the AML and CTF gu guidelines. And you're telling me Vingold reflects badly on world check. World check. So the name Vingold was removed and the label was changed to put it under other payables and provisions at a different amount of two million. Uh, which you say is due to uh, fluctuations in the price of gold, the value of gold. Yes. So, Your Honor, the $2 million, the label was changed. And if you allow me, I can explain why it was important to not have this name as well. Well, you've just object... explained that because he was he reflects yeah. badly on world check and it wouldn't be good for the credibility of the company if he was seen to be a counterparty. Is that the bottom line? Exactly. Because the financial statement is then circulated to get more financing. So we, do, we uh, Sam cannot be shown that it's getting financing from, you know. Uh, All right. Well, I have, your, I have your evidence on that, uh, that this is um, a, a strategy or stratagem to um, conceal the provider of funding to the company in these accounts, the identity of the funder. Yes, Your Honor. And so is it your case that um, Vingold had not been paid back uh, the 2.05 million loan that it provided? And thus, this is capital, investment capital gold in the company that you arranged for it. Is that your case? Yes, Your Honor. What, what, I, am, what I am aware of or what I can share is Win Gold was an authority the, that was introduced by Samuel Abu Ahmed. I was responsible for paying the finance charges. So I apologize. I always go back to the point of JV company consultant. Anytime a third party investor would deploy capital with Sam Precious Metals, they would expect an interest income, a finance fee. This finance fee, if company, if Sam Refinery was going to pay them, that was supposed to be deducted from the JV company consultant fees, which was 10% of company's net profit. So in this case, I am in, in, uh, uh, in possession of documents which, which demonstrate. So there are several documents. First documents is a statement of accounts from Sam, which shows this investment was booked on 1st of March until August. And then I'm in possession of WhatsApp message from Mr. Sammy, where he quotes the, the promoter of this company and saying he has renewed the investment plan for another six months. So if from September of uh, 2019, another six months would take us very well over the end of financial year. And therefore, this investment would still be on the books. 
so uh, um, I, if your honor would allow uh, my counsel to submit uh, these documents this would demonstrate acknowledgement from the directors that this investment was booked as a long term facility mr shakti you are rattling off references to documents that have not been produced that are not in the bundle your evidence is that as i understand it without these documents that this money 2.05 million from vingold um was not repaid and it remains in the books here now under a different label as an advance from third party as other payables of 2 million um so the pr- the figure has been changed the re- the um reference to vingold in the draft accounts has been removed uh, and your case is that this is my contribution of investment capital into the company of uh, gold represented by that amount of money 200 so sorry 2 million dollars is that the position yes right. yes your honor right well i'm going to to uh, uh move uh, call mrs b joy to move on from there if mr gosh wants to make an application uh, he can do so at an appropriate time but i am not going to um Uh, allow any further reference to documents that are not presently in the bundle at this stage so mrs b joy do you want to move on to another topic or do you um, have further, further questions on this yes your honor if your honor may please allow me i have two or three follow up questions on that with yes. particular reference to contribution from win gold yes carry on you're entitled thank to come you. back on this for sir, for sure thank you very much your honor so mr shakti you were suggesting that the contribution from win gold is parked under other payables and provisions as under item number 16 yes you agree that the accruals which are found below advance from third parties are fees paid to win gold no i'm not I, i'm not aware uh, of what that means what what does this 42598 stand for i don't know i suggest to you that um, the contribution from win gold for 2 million parked under item 16 has attracted accrual charges and other payables totaling to us dollars 46817 do you agree or not i would say any allocation from an investor would attract interest income now i'm not sure if that interest income is being reflected please as please answer a my specific question mr shakti Ms. mrs b joy was... let mrs b joy let the witness answer but please clarify something in your question first of all uh, are you accepting that the item 16 advance from third party represents the vin gold uh, loan do you accept that that is the vin gold loan They, do you accept the evidence mr shakti has just given that this has been relabeled that it is the vingol contribution and it is uh, shown there as uh, not paid off your honor mike the point that mr shakti has agreed was this amount of 2 million is referenced as other payables and provisions under item number 16 Yes but what 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 is your position on it because the 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 evidence um that i received yesterday was that this money from vingold had been paid at the end of the year 2.050 million uh, and that it was paid off in early january of uh, this uh, of 2019 which is why it doesn't appear in the 2019 accounts therefore your case and the evidence i've received on your side is that this was not investment capital but was trading capital uh, uh, trading investment um and mr shakti is disputing that um 
evidence by saying the Vingold facility investment um, has not been paid off. It's changed from 2.05 million because of the price fluctuations in gold. Its label has been changed. And on top of that, a reference to Vingold in the draft accounts has been removed and it's been placed under item 16. So what is your case on that? Do you accept that the Vingold payment remained in the company or was it paid off? Your Honor, the entry in 2018, if I may please take you through. Yes. It's different. It's Al Shahir. It's from Al Shahir, Your Honor. This in, this in, the, Your Honor, if you, if you allow me to clarify. I think, I think there is a be... bit of confusion here Please. because the don't previous speak. entry. Yes, don't yeah, speak sorry. across each other. Go on. You're going to explain to me what what is yes. the position? Yes, Your Honor. If you if we were to look at the entries for convertible loans from the financial year 2018, which is found which? on page number seven nine two. Yes. Gold loan from third party, the amount reflected is 20501988. Yes. And that is from Al Sahir. And that is the evidence that's given by the claimant's witness. Ah, I see. Sorry. Yes. There is confusion on my part. I apologize. So going back to the other page. Which is which is very common, Your Honor, because of too many numbers and Yes. Good. Let's you know, go back to the other page. Which one was it? Eight. Four. Yeah, the page, the page that we were discussing currently under discussion is 817. 817. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. So what do you say that item 16 is then advanced from third party? Yes, Your Honor. So it is my suggestion to Mr. Shakti that uh, this 2 million reflected under item 16 is a short term advance from a third party entity called Win Gold. Well, that, so you, you, you're in agreement on this then? But it is not, I mean, my suggestion is that it is only a short term contribution, trade contribution, not a working capital. All right, let me just get this. And I'm assuming our, our council will be submitting an application to demonstrate the, the duration of this investment, which would well, show that uh, just pause a moment. Your Honor, we have a document in that regard, which has been. Sorry, sorry yes. to interfere. You're not making your honor. Yes. Um, just wanted to bring to your notice that we have a WhatsApp chat about the wind goal, which has been produced by the opposite council yesterday. If it would help the court, I can get that document projected on the screen, Your Honor. Yes, let's. Let's uh, look at this was produced yesterday, but I, yes, I, I, have I, has it been produced in court yet? Have I seen it? That doesn't have draft audit report, though. Is it the is it the chat we were looking at yesterday, Mrs. B. Joy? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, this is getting very confusing at the moment. Um, so uh, your Honor, if, if we may re please refer to that WhatsApp chat, I think the confusion, we will have lots of clarity on the Vin Gold contribution. All can right. we, can I please have your permission to project? Yes, it? yes, put the Vin Gold chat up so that Mr. Shakti can see it. Yes, we have the document, Your Honor. Your Honor, it clearly says um, the agreement with Wingold is for six months and we go to roll it with Wingold approval on August 19th and pay their six months due from Snyder Global DMCC. So subject to agreeing the role of principal Sam should pay Snyder Global DMCC the profit by August 19th in order to get it to Wingold. So I, Mrs. B. Joy, I haven't seen this document before. This has not been produced yet by anyone. And you've not produced any of these documents that are coming thick and fast 
in documentary form for me to consider. They're not in the bundle. Uh, and you're now producing it like a rabbit out of the hat. I appreciate it was uh, produced by your ca uh, your uh, colleague, Mr. Ghosh. Um, but it's no wonder I'm confused when you are, um, as it were, bringing these documents into play piecemeal in the fashion that you are both doing. So, um, You know, we apologize for, you know, whatever inconvenience. I, I guess the directions were clear yesterday that these documents had to be sent to the court. And uh, we were expecting that the opposite counsel would do that. Well, I haven't got them. They've not been sent to me. I don't know whether they've been sent to the registry in Dubai. Mr. Ghosh, are these documents, have they been sent to the registry? I can't hear you. Your, your microphone's not on. Uh, yes, Your Lordship, it was sent to the registry. That's how Mrs. Bijoy also got it. She was also part of the email. Let me just check the case management system. No, unfortunately, they've not been forwarded to me. Um, right, what are we going to do about this? Uh, is there anybody who who is on from the courts? Uh, Miss Norton, are you with us? Yes, indeed, Justice Mullen. Uh, are you listening to this? Um, these suggestions that documents were sent to the court yesterday that have not been forwarded on to me. I don't know who they were sent to. Uh, Lots of it was sent to e-registry. So I'm afraid e-registry, um, it, it's not an active account. Uh, so if you were to send a document to that email address, I'm afraid it would just automatically bounce back. Uh, if you wish to share a document with the court, that would have to be sent to registry, registry at difccourts.ae. Uh, let me check, let me check. Uh, it's yeah. registry at dicourts.ae, right? Correct, in the plural, yes, courts.ae. I've resent it, forwarded it again. Thank you. And Justice Moran, I shall forward that on to you. Thank you very much. I think whilst all this is being assembled, we'll take a short break of 10 minutes so that you can uh, all, uh, <coughs> we all can um, collect our thoughts on what is being um, produced and referred to here. Um, I want to look at these documents that you're now going to use to cross-examine Mr. Shakti about the Vingold payment. Yes, Your Honour. The, 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 the pages um, 817 and the other page number, just give me that again, that we were looking at comparing these 792. two. 792. 792, Your yes, Honour. I've yes. got it. Yes, I've got it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to adjourn for 
certainly um, 10 minutes. Um, I will come back on screen and online when I'm ready after I've had a chance to review all of the documents that were supplied yesterday. I did get the uh, Annex 3 to the Memorandum of Understanding, and of course I've read that. And if I had been supplied with these documents, I would have read them as well. Um, but at the moment, I have no idea what you are talking about because I haven't read the documents. So uh, I will wait till I get them and then perhaps I will understand the cross-examination uh, rather better than so far in relation to this uh, item, this Vingold item and these entries on page 817, other payables and provisions and convertible loans. Right, so I'm going offline. Turn off your microphones, please. Yes, could all parties, if they can hear me, please uh, rejoin the hearing? Yes, Your Lordship. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Right. Yes, uh, well, I'm just going to tell you uh, what the situation is um, at court, what I have received. I've received five clips of documents. I've received five clips of documents, one of which was referred to yesterday, which is the uh, WhatsApp conversation. Uh, <clears throat> with two date, it's Anuj, Sami, and Shakti only. With, for your reference, seven eighteen, the time in the top left hand corner of the first page. Uh, two dates, December fifteenth, twenty twenty, and January second, twenty twenty one. And um, this related to the um, <clears throat> issue of signing the resolution of the 31st of December 2020 uh, and uh, Mr. Anuj saying um, that uh, we're already past the deadline of 31st of December 2020, need to finish this as soon as possible and so on. And that um, ends. Uh, yes, your lordship. Yesterday, yesterday, Mr. Anuj, uh, also we asked him this question. Yeah, uh, you, it yeah, was yeah. shown. Just let me for a moment review with you yes. what I have received and what the status of these documents is uh, as material uh, admissible in the hearing and what applications you wish to make in relation to them. Now, um, I allowed you to cross-examine on this um, first item I'm mentioning and you did cross examine on that. So that document that I've just referred to and described uh, is in evidence in the proceedings. Yes, Your uh, And uh, I will make of it what I must. Now, I have received four clips of documents this morning. Uh, I do not know what the status of these documents is. In large respects, they are. Um, I won't say meaningless, but extremely difficult to understand because I have no evidence as to what they are. Um, there are some notations on them suggesting who is speaking, but they are meaningless without a narrative statement explaining what they are. The first one I'll refer to, it has a date, a time in the top left hand corner of 11.19 and the date is July the 14th, 2019. And this is the one where you, just a moment, a few moments ago, Mrs. B. Joy, were going to put something to the, to the witness, Mr. Shakti, which is on the third page of the document. Um, the date at the top of that page is July the 18th, 2019. The, yes, agree yeah. the agreement uh, the, and the entry uh, ending with the numbers um, 3427 
So this is Mr. Sammy saying the agreement is that Vin Gold with deposit with this is you see this is the 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 difficulty with these WhatsApp messages. They need to be translated. They are um, they need to be interpreted. They can't just be produced at random uh, and uh, the witnesses and the court be expected to understand them. But what it says is the agreement is that Vingold with with I presume it means will deposit the gold in Snyder Global DMCC's account with Sam Precious Metals. I spoke to Manish, who is Manish. No interest has been paid yet, only yet. Only provision has been made. I've asked him to pay interest and gold back to Snyder Global DMCC account. Me, Dino, will send email on this. And then Dino replies, the agreement with Vingold is for six months and we got to roll it with Vingold approval on August 19th and pay their six month dues from Snyder Global DMCC. So subject to agreeing the role of principal, Sam should pay. And that's that document. Next, I have an Emirates NBD statement of account. Um, two uh, items are flagged. Means absolutely nothing to me in the evidence that's been given so far. The next I have is a Gmail exchange. The date is on the top of the relevant email, though this was sent. Um, it seems to have been sent from Mr. Shakti at Snyder Global to Shakti at Gmail, but it's copying the exchange of emails which which begin. with um, an email on the 26th of August. And this relates, I think, to the next docu set of clip of documents I'm going to refer to from um, Dhruva Acharya. Dear Mehul, uh, I hope you are well and so on. Uh, and the, he says the agreement between Snyder Global DMCC and Vingold expires today. That's the 26th of August 2019. Um, and there's a response from Mehul, who I presume is at Vingold. Um, and then Dhruva Acharya writes to Mohammed Ayob at Precious Met Sam Precious Metals. Hi Ayob, I need your help to respond to Mayhul. Please respond to the mail, brother. I will handle him, brother. Thank you, brother. And then finally, um, another WhatsApp clip where it appears, I'm not sure whose number it is. Ah, probably Druva's, because what he's doing is putting on WhatsApp an email he's proposing to send to um, <clears throat> Mehul, who I presume is Vin Gold. A very warm Eid Mubarak to you. Eid Mubarak, forgive me. Uh, <clears throat> August the 12th, 2019. With regards to your facility with Snyder Global DMCC on deposit with Sam Precious Metals, here is your monthly return statement for May, June, July. Once the team comes back after the Eid holidays, we will provide you a formal response incorporating the Sam statement of the returns. Warm regards, Druva. Uh, <clears throat> gents, all OK with the email above before I send? And then there's various conversations which I don't need to read at the moment because they're uh, incomprehensible and meaningless without evidence to deal with them. So I think I should ask you, first of all, Mr. Ghosh, 
where have all these documents come from? You produced them all, as I understand it, yesterday to the registry, though I, I've only just got them now. Uh, some, I, I think, uh, had to be resent. Um, what is your application in relation to them? Let me just point out, first of all, that um, I can understand the documents enough to recognise that um, there are matters here concerning the nature of the Vingold investment um, that ought to have been put to Mr. Sammy, ought to have been put to Dhruva Acharya, uh, and they have not been afforded the opportunity of explaining them. Uh, their evidence is um, seriously compromised if you wish to introduce these when they've not had an opportunity to deal with them. Um, Dino as well, um, dealing here with um, the Vingold account. Um, none of this was put to him, Dino, to ask him what these documents mean. And the prospect, I presume you are making an application that I should admit these documents. Uh, and of course, I'll hear Mrs. B. Joy in relation to them. Um, but we have a situation at the moment where Mr. Shakti is referring to matters in these documents um, and in effect relying on their contents to substantiate um, <clears throat> the defendant's case. And none of them were put to the relevant witnesses for the claimant who should answer them. So that if I were to admit these documents, it would involve and require the recalling of Sammy, of all witnesses for the claimant. Um, and effectively, a massive disruption of the trial. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I don't understand the full import of the documents, but it's plain to me that they relate to matters which are in issue between the parties and your failure to produce them in the first place, your failure to include them in the evidence of the witness who is now giving evidence so that they could be responded to and dealt with um, has seriously prejudiced the trial. And if you apply to uh, admit them, uh, I will have to hear Mrs. B. Joy's um, objections, as I suspect they will be, um, and determine how to proceed. Uh, uh, and if, for example, and I'm not indicating any view at the moment on any application you may make to admit them, uh, if you apply to admit them, and if I, in the circumstances, consider that fairness and justice requires that the witnesses be recalled in order for them to deal with the contents of these documents and explain them from their point of view, that will probably involve an adjournment of the trial with all costs being paid by you for failure to produce these documents in the first place. So I think um, it's coming up to half, it is half past one. I think you need to take instructions from Mr. Shakti. Um, I, in the circumstances, um, whilst although Mr. Shakti is giving evidence and you should not speak to a witness as counsel, with a witness who is giving evidence, unless Mrs. Bijoy objects, I am going to permit you to speak to Mr. Shakti in order to get instructions on how you wish to proceed in relation to all of these documents. Um, and then you can make your application if you wish to make an application or all of these documents uh, will have to be uh, disregarded 
because of your failure to put them in evidence at the time of making of the witness statements being being made. It is a very serious uh, compromise to the proceedings at the moment. Um, so uh, I will give you an opportunity to speak with the witness who's presently giving evidence. Uh, I will then uh, hear what you have to say about the documents, what your application in relation to them is. And then I will hear Mrs. B. Joy uh, in response, whatever her position is in the light of the position you take. Mrs. B. Joy, I don't think I can do anything else at the moment other than give that indication. Um, I don't think there's any point in you making any preliminary objection or observations at the moment um, until Mr. Ghosh uh, uh, takes instructions from his clients and uh, explains to the court what the position is. Indeed, that will have to involve an explanation as to why all of these materials uh, have been produced so late in the day. So I'm going to adjourn now uh, for the normal lunch break uh, and we'll resume at 2.30 in Dubai. Um, there is no prospect of us getting to your expert witness today, Mrs. V. Joy. And there is, yeah. no pros the, the <clears throat> there is no prospect, I fear, um, of uh, the trial concluding tomorrow as it is presently scheduled to do. To, to do. Uh, uh, I um, am presently not available on Friday to continue with the trial. I don't know whether you would be anyway. So we, we may have to, <clears throat> if, if the matter has to be adjourned, we will have to find some additional dates. So I'll leave it at that for now, and uh, we will resume at 2.30 and see uh, where we are going after Mr. Shakti has taken instructions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, right. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, I'll start with. Um, yes, good afternoon. Do you have an application to make, Mr. Ghosh, in relation to these five pieces of evidence, one of which we did uh, deal with yesterday that I adverted to before the luncheon adjournment. Yes, uh, along with an application, uh, we intend to file the witness statement also uh, stating the reasons why uh, it has been delayed as your Lordship directed prior to that. And we shall file the application today. So, um, you want to file an application to um, admit these documents, these clips of documents, which of course will have to be given an identification number, which they have not yes. got at the moment. They'll be the next sequence SC, since they're being produced by Mr. Uh, Shakti Chauhan. Um, Your Honor, if I may please. Uh, well, wait a minute, Mrs. Bijoy, I'm going to hear from you. I just want to be clear on the scope of the application that's being made, first of all, and the implications of it, um, <clears throat> so that you can respond fully, Mrs. B. Joy. So, Mr. Mr. Ghosh, you are seeking leave to introduce these documents in evidence with an explanatory statement as to what they mean, who is speaking, a translation and narrative of them in effect. Because if I were to allow you to intro introduce the documents in evidence, um, fairness would certainly require uh, that evidence to be given to explain them um, so that the claimants can respond to not only the documents, but the interpretation that is placed upon them by um, this witness. Um, <clears throat> and you also understand the implication that if I admit these documents, which undoubtedly should have been put to the witnesses who have already given evidence, that will require those witnesses to be recalled and given an opportunity to deal with these documents. It also will require, if I allow reference to these documents, 
that those witnesses be, have, be given an opportunity to make a statement responding to the evidence that's going to be given by Mr. Shakti to explain them and give his narrative of them. Um, and do you also understand that that inevitably means that the trial would have to be adjourned today? And whilst I'm not making any decisions on anything at the moment till I've heard from Mrs. B. Joy, but if I accepted your applications, when they are properly filed, they're only being outlined at the moment to me. If I accepted those applications, the very likely result is that I would order your clients to pay all of the costs thrown away by this necessary adjournment, if that happens. That's fully understood, is it, by you and your clients? Uh, in, re in relation to the costs, I mean, are you lot, is your lordship referring to the final uh, costs for the case? No, 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 okay. no. I'm just referring to the costs thrown away if I admit the documents and yes, there, are, there are additional statements, statements in response, wasted days of hearing, two days of hearing in effect today and, and tomorrow, uh, and cost so, costs flowing from the uh, necessary um, actions that need to be taken. Um, I may also require an amendment to your pleadings for the um, respondent, for, sorry, for the claimant to respond to it by an amendment of its pleadings. Uh, re it reply, it would be. Um, so is there anything else you wish to say by way of explanation for why these documents were not submitted? Because uh, I, I don't understand them fully because they've not been explained in any evidence, uh, but they do seem to deal with um, capital introduced into the company through Vingold, um, <clears throat> which as I understand it to be your case, Mr. Shakti, from what he said so far, is performance of his obligation under the MOU or part performance of his obligation under the MOU. That is his case in relation to uh, this Vingold deposit, which has now come to light and been developed in the way that uh, it is being developed. And in the way you wish to develop it, it seems from these further documents you are now producing. Um, <clears throat> so th that it seems to me is the, the, the implications of um, admitting these documents. So do you want to explain to me why it is, <clears throat> since, since it's been Mr. Shakti's case that he has complied with his <clears throat> obligations under the MOU, introducing the required amount of capital, why were these documents not produced long ago? Uh, Your Lordship, I've been no, instructed to... Sorry, if somebody else turn off the microphone, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Lordship, uh, I've been instructed to state that in the request to produce uh, some resolutions were requested by Mr. Shakti, and uh, that is the first reason which I have got uh, in, during the lunch period. Um, and, and the documents which were produced, it was produced under the heading that we believe these are the only relevant documents. So those resolutions were not all those resolutions which the court had directed the different uh, claimants to produce were not produced under the garb of an email saying that we believe these are the only relevant documents. So that's but, the uh, explanation which I have now. We're not talking about uh, documents in the claimant's possession. We're talking about these documents that you have produced yesterday and now today or overnight. I don't know when they were actually produced to the registry or Mrs. B. Joy. We're talking about these documents which were in your client's custody, possession or control, and you have not produced them until now. And I want to 
uh, give you the opportunity to explain why they were not produced, because Mrs. Bejoy is going to object to their introduction, I imagine, uh, at this stage. So um, the first thing you should do is explain to me why they were not produced until now. Uh, according to instructions, um, Lordship, I can only say now that probably those board resolutions had a direct link with these documents and, and the supporting board resolutions, which Mr. Shakti did not have. So uh, that is the reason why he was unable to produce it to me or to the court. So um, are you telling me that there are other documents that you are requesting the claimant to produce that they have not produced? Which uh, were requested but, earlier. I'm sorry? Which were requested earlier during the request to produce. And they had objected to the request to produce. The uh, honorable judge had directed them to produce and those were not produced. And did the judge make a ruling on? No, on the... the ruling was please produce these documents. Which ruling was this? This was, I have to check. The only um, order I have is the amended case management order of Justice Nasir Al Nasir of the <clears throat> give you the date. I, I'll just of the 9th of August 2023. I'll just check your lordship. This was dealt with in production of documents at paragraph 10 with a Redfern schedule procedure prescribed. And you're saying you requested documents in that process, are you? And they were refused. Did you make an application to the court for their production or not? Yes, in the Redfern schedule it was uh, requested and the right hand column was the uh, refusal, I believe. I have to check it. Mm. I, I haven't got the Redfern schedule. Yeah, I understand your lordship.
while you're looking, I'll ask Mrs. B. Joy if uh, she can assist with this Redfern procedure and yes. the request for resolutions. It was objected to. Was there a ruling on it? And by whom? Mrs. B. Joy. Your Honor, I have already reached out to the part one lawyers and I'm taking instructions. I believe it was I should. Justice Nasir only. I remember that, but I'm searching for it. Very well. While you're searching also, uh, let us not forget the documents that you produced yesterday, also not produced hitherto, that were shown on screen only. I'm not sure whether I've got those documents or not, but what they were. Um, it may be that it's the document I've referred to that was produced yesterday about the uh, <clears throat> uh, resolution of the 31st of December and Mr. Garge pressing for it, um, <clears throat> pressing for a signature upon it. Um, but I'm not sure, so you need to make that position clear as well. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, we have located the order. Yes. If you may please allow, we can project that order on the screen. Well, yes, let's have a look at it. And I also received instructions from the part one lawyers that they have produced all the documents that were um, requested in the production document production order, and there is nothing to be produced. Right. Well, I'll look at the order. My colleague is waiting in the lobby. If someone from the court can please accept my colleague, then we can do the projection, please. Yes, he's just been accepted mr jerome yes your honor <clears throat> yes the order was passed on 13th march 2024 yes Right, and is the request here? Because that's meaningless without seeing the yeah. red, red phone schedule. Normally, the order appears in the last column of the red phone schedule. Apartment lawyers are locating the red fern schedule also, Your Honor. We will right. we will be in a position to share that in a while. Right. Thank you. Apologize for the delay. Well, we'll we'll carry on. We'll look at that in a yeah. moment. Um, but but with all due respects, Your Honor, I believe that uh, substantial time, money, and efforts have been invested in this proceeding till now. Yes, just pause, Mrs. B. Joy. I'll give you full full opportunity, fear not, to say everything you want to say in relation to this application. So, um, Mr. Ghosh, um, yes, your lordship. I want to be sure of the limit of the documents that you are seeking to introduce and evidence to describe them and their effect. Um, I went through with you the documents that I had received from the registry, five uh, clips of documents in number. I identified them to you. Is that the limit of what you are now seeking to uh, put in evidence under cover of a further witness statement? It's uh, related to Vingold only. Uh, as, if I am not wrong. We are not producing any other documents except the one which was already uh, put to Mr. Anuj Garg. That also I'll add because as a process, it needs to be added. Yes, and it needs to be given an exhibit number. Yes. Anyway, <clears throat> right. What will it be? Exhibit number SC6, is it? Uh, yes, it will be. 
SC7, I think, the last SC exhibit. Yes, SC6. Index, SC7. Ah. SC6 is a WhatsApp screenshot as well. Which we've looked at. Um, so SC7. So the document, um, I'm going to mark it now, but I want these properly produced under cover of a witness statement from Mr. Shakti. If I admit them, I'm not uh, agreeing to admit them as yet, but you need to know if I do admit them, what you must do. So they would have to be produced properly if they are admitted after I've heard Mrs. B. Joy. Um, so what is your explanation for the failure to produce these five documents, before, sets of documents before the hearing? Uh, that's what I was trying to uh, convince you, Your Lordship, that the, board, the request to produce some documents were not provided, which has a direct link, according to my client, with these Vingold documents. But that would not have prevented you from producing these documents in your possession. I agree with you. That's and the point. It, and it might, uh, if you can demonstrate by reference to these documents, that there are uh, documents which other documents in the claimant's possession which ought to be produced but have not been produced, uh, then that. Uh, may also uh, have been advanced by you, but is there any other explanation for why you haven't produced them until now? No, I don't have any other explanation. Very well. Uh, I'm going to listen to Mrs. B. Joy and uh, I will consider what she says and you will have a res you will have an opportunity to reply. Mrs. B. Joy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, if I may please briefly address you on the issue of wind gold. Um, the only the only issue that we are trying to address is what is the nature of the investment that has come from wind gold? Yes. There is no dispute as to how long these investments were retained within the entity. Well, that's not clear at the moment from the accounting documents that have been produced, the financial uh, statements for the various years, because we only have a snapshot at the end of each year. And these documents, I understand them enough to show that this, that they show, prima facie show, that the Vin Gold, I will, I will just call it capital, not investment capital or trading capital, the Vin Gold capital, appears to have been in the company uh, for a prolonged period with a return being paid upon it. That's what these documents seem to show. Without explanation, that is all I can observe from their face. Um, Your Honour, we have not looked at the 2020 annual financial statements and uh, if the opposite, the Defence Council or Mr Shakti can show this amount in the 2020 balance sheet Perhaps, you know, there is a force in doing further investigation on whether or not Wingold is a relevant issue to stall the entire proceedings that we have reached till now. Uh, also, your Lordship, if I remember, uh, Ms. Bijoy may correct me, in the op on the opening day, I think uh, I recollect Mr. Sammy had admitted that, yes, something somebody called Wingold had invested, though he couldn't clarify more the dates and all those things. Well, yes, so that he, explains, Your Honor, why these documents were produced and shown to him and asked a specific question. So this was, a, um, there was plenty of opportunity for doing that, and why was it not done? Well, we've not got an explanation for that, but I have to do justice between the parties, and if uh, errors uh, uh, or even incompetence have occurred, um, so long as a party can be adequately compensated in costs, uh, then uh, I uh, have to consider whether I ought to admit the evidence or not. Um, it's clear what is being said here 
which is that these documents um, demonstrate that Mr. Shakti did introduce gold capital into the um, <clears throat> company. Um, and I have to determine, first of all, what the obligation was in relation to that capital and whether or not it was fulfilled, assuming for the moment and not deciding that the obligation was a binding obligation. Um, and these documents on their face appear to go to that issue. Now, um, all, all that you've said, uh, Mrs. B. Joy, I, I fully accept there's no uh, proper explanation as to why they were not produced until now. Um, so please make your objection in full, uh, in a structured way, and I will listen to you and decide then whether to admit the documents with all the consequences that that will entail or not. Yes, Your Honor. So I would like to make um, three points in this regard, Your Honor. The first one would be that um, this is a proceeding, it's a, it's a CFI proceeding, the Court of Instance First Instance Proceeding that has been commenced under Part 7 of the DIFC RBC. And this proceeding was commenced 13 months ago. There were sufficient opportunities for the parties to exchange pleadings, submit evidence. In fact, parties themselves have accepted that there has been an elaborate document disclosure stage that they have passed through. When, when I was instructed to do the trial, I did come across a lot of documentation that were not connected to the case or not relevant to, relevant to the current proceedings. Indeed, I do acknowledge that there has been bifurcation of cases because of other pending proceedings, which may have, can have some impact on these proceedings. By When I say that, I'm referring to 019 and 006 of 2023. It is also because of these pending proceedings, very, very important that we progress on this case because whatever consequences in this case may have some impact on the other pending proceedings. So we have to evaluate how this uh, process of reconducting the trial in this proceeding will impact the other pending proceedings. There has to be a view, a holistic view about the whole um, the status of the pending proceedings. Although the, the opposite counsel has raised an objection that uh, certain documents were not produced as part of the court order, from the bundle, I could not find any further actions being pursued against the claimants for not submitting those documents. In fact, there, are, there were numerous opportunities or provisions within the RDC for making subsequent applications requesting the claimant to produce those documents. No steps were pursued whatsoever. Now, concentrate on these documents, please, if you will, that have just been produced. Your Honour, if I were to focus on the documentation that is produced or that's been under discussion, win goal, my only submission that uh, the, the, there is, it, I would say it is an effort to mislead the court. I, why would I say that? Because win, win goal, we were paying profits or, um, charges to Wingold, which is very well evident from the financial statement that I have produced this morning and I have asked the witness to testify. If, if I were to refer your honor to the same entry, it is very clear that the, in fact, Mr. Mr. Sami and I believe Mr. Anuj has also testified that for any trades that are done with other partners, the profits will get um, splitted. Whereas the working capital arrangement under the MOU requires no sharing of profit. So that dis distinguishes these investments from that of the long-term working capital investment. So why are you objecting to the admission of these documents then if they do not undermine that case? Uh, Your Honor, it is in the manner in which they are introducing the documents that is giving an impression to my client that they are prejudicing the whole process. But it's not... <laughs> It, it, it's it is what the contents of the documents uh, demonstrate. If you are in a position to deal with these documents, 
uh, without there being uh, evidence given in relation to them by your clients, um, why are you objecting to them? Um, it, it seems to me that um, it's necessary for evidence to be given on one side as to what they mean uh, and what they show about the capital that was invested in the company and what was the nature of that capital and evidence to be given in response for me to decide. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to be faced with competing submissions about um, on their face, virtually incomprehensible slang and shorthand and uh, terms of art that are not explained to me by evidence as they should be. Yes, Your so, Honour, the difficult. So, so are you are you objecting to the admission of the documents? That's the first question. Uh, and and then the second question is, if you are objecting, um, on what basis are you objecting? How is it that you say that their admission is prejudicial to your clients? Your Honour, um, yes, I would answer Your Honour by saying yes. We are raising our objection to produce these documents. Why we object? Because these are WhatsApp screenshots. By simply producing a WhatsApp screenshot without knowing the background of it, without properly giving an explanation to it, can have a prejudicial impact. Like how we have looked at the uh, the WhatsApp in the morning. So we were not in a position to understand the the reason why these communication were there in the first place. So that needs to give a sufficient opportunity for my client to again comment upon these documentation. Yes, I quote, I totally agree with you. The, so the question is whether uh, it, they should be admitted and explained uh, for fairness and justice sake, bearing in mind that it will probably have cost, adverse cost consequences to the defendant for failing to produce them thus far, but you recognize in what you have just said that there is a need for them to be explained and a need for them to be responded to. Perhaps I should ask you this question. How do you say you are prejudiced by the consequences of admitting them, which is an adjournment, when you can be fully compensated in costs? Your Honor, if, if we can be adequately compensated in terms of the costs that we have spent in the three day trial and in also in terms of preparing for the trial, I believe I can I can take instructions from my clients as to whether we can adjourn the trial and resume back again. Well, it's, not going, to, uh, it's not going to be all of the costs because we have covered a lot of ground which is not going to be wasted. This is going to be an adjournment, not a restart of the trial if I admit the documents. But uh, I, I do understand your, um, your conveyed, your clients conveyed frustration at uh, what has happened here. Um, but I have to try this case on the basis of the evidence that is available if a party fails to produce relevant evidence at the appropriate time, the question is then whether it should be admitted uh, and to do fairness and justice between the parties and whether the party who is uh, affected by it can be adequately compensated in costs. I, I, I am very, very mindful of the fact and the submission you've made that uh, the outcome of other proceedings may be impacted, I'll put it only that way, by the court's findings in relation to this claim which is being made, which undoubtedly comes first in time. It is the progenitor of all of the disputes between these parties, which is one of the reasons uh, why I determined that it should proceed to trial first but it must proceed to trial fairly on the basis of all the available evidence, so long as a party in default of, for failure to produce that evidence pays the penalty in costs. That's the point. 
fairness and justice comes first um, and the necess necessity of the court considering all relevant evidence comes first. So um, I've interrupted you and I apologize for that. Is there anything else you wish to say in your objections as to why I should not admit this evidence, having made it plain to you that if I do admit it with all of the consequences that will be entra entrained by that admission, um, that you, your client will not be paying the costs of the, those consequences. Your Honor, I would like to also get clarified as to um, assuming these documents are going to be accepted, will my clients also get an opportunity to appear as witness or submit their evidence and uh, be, be examined? Yes, of course. Um, your clients will be able to produce responsive statements to the statement I'm going to direct shall be prepared, uh, giving a detailed narrative of what these documents are, what they show in the contentions of the defendant, uh, and your clients will be fully entitled to respond to those statements with statements of their own. Uh, they will be recalled so that the matters uh, may be put to them in cross-examination properly so that they have an, an opportunity to deal with it and you will have a right to re-examine to elicit anything in relation to the documents that you wish to uh, elicit. That is the procedure um, that will follow if I admit these documents. Your Honour, I would also like to find out if there are more documents or is this going to be the last exercise in terms well, of... Well, yes, I've asked that question. Um, and um, the defendants can be absolutely clear and notified now that if I do admit these documents, um, it is the very last chance for them to produce any documents that are going to be relied on. Um, uh, yes, certainly. Um, uh, well, I will come back to Mr. Ghosh. I'll give him an opportunity in a moment. But is there anything else you wish to say beyond what we've already discussed? Uh, no, Your Lordship. Not, only, not, uh, you, not, not you, Mr. Ghosh. Mrs. Oh, Bedroy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mrs. Bedroy. No, Your Honor. I'm I'm good for now. Um, yeah. I would grab my thoughts because this is all like a last minute surprise to me. Well, so it is. It is. It's a it's a very it is a most unfortunate uh, sequence of events that have transpired, that began to transpire yesterday afternoon with the late production of documents and now has become manifold uh, this morning uh, and until now. Um, I um, am grateful for your restraint in your objections. Um, and it is understood precisely uh, how you are taken completely by surprise by these materials. So, Mr. Gosh, um, that first question, the critical question, um, is this the limit? These five clips of documents that I identified before that you wish to introduce in the proceedings that have not been produced so far? Yes, Your Lordship. Right. Very well. I'm going to give my ruling. <clears throat> the court has before it an application on behalf of the defendants to admit a collection of documents which are largely concerned with the arrangements for the introduction of a particular uh, <coughs> deposit of capital into the company from an entity known as Vingold. The documents on their face are confusing, uh, difficult to understand, unexplained, and very lately produced. Nevertheless, there is sufficient in them that is comprehensible enough to me to recognize that they do appear to be material 
to the introduction of capital through an entity known as Vingold. There is no question at all but the, that these documents ought to have been produced from the very earliest moment in this case, referred to in the pleadings and evidenced and described and explained in the witness statements which were placed before the court. There has been a wholesale failure on the part of the defendants to deal with this evidence in a proper and conventional manner in accordance with the rules. The court would be perfectly justified in rejection, rejecting the admission of this evidence at this very late stage. However, in the interests of justice, I take the view that if there has been error or failure on the part of the defendants or its counsel, uh, that should not be allowed to lead to a potentially unjust result in circumstances where the admission of the documents, uh, the ad adverse effect of the admission of the documents can be adequately compensated in costs, as I believe it can be. Moreover, to do justice properly, uh, I am going to require, as a condition of admitting the documents, the following, that there be uh, an amendment to the defence to explain precisely what these documents evident, evidence, there will be an opportunity for the claimants to reply to that pleading. The documents will be the subject of an explanatory further statement from the witness producing them, Mr. Shakti Chauhan which must narrate the provenance of the documents, their meaning and effect in full and complete terms relating to the Vingold capital. The claimant will then have an opportunity to adduce such evidence from its witnesses as it sees fit to respond to the evidence and the documents that I am going to admit. On that basis, I have decided that the documents shall be admitted. Unfortunately, this hearing will have to be adjourned and it will be adjourned only for the shortest time possible for these matters to be attended to, these consequential matters to be attended to, so that I will tabulate a timetable for those necessary steps that this application um, has brought about uh, after I have completed this ruling. I am satisfied that all of the costs consequent upon this application to admit further documents uh, which I am allowing uh, these five clips of documents lately produced may be admitted subject to the terms I have outlined. On the basis that the defendants shall pay the costs of and incidental to the admission of the documents, which will include the costs thrown away as a result of the adjournment which is now to follow, the costs of producing the documents and amending the pleadings, all of the costs of the amendment will be paid by the defendants in any event, including the costs of the further witness statements. And if there are any um, additional wasted days. There are wasted days. Most of today has been wasted. Tomorrow will be wasted. Uh, the expert 
For example, he's no doubt been booked to give evidence today at cost. All of those costs will be borne by the defendants. And only on that basis do I admit uh, this very late coming evidence. That is my ruling. Now to the timetabling of those steps. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, you will go first. Um, I am wanting to bring this matter back on for trial at the earliest opportunity. I don't have my diary and my available dates, but the date will be fixed at the convenience of the court and of the claimant's representatives, and you and your clients will have to fit in. Do you understand? Because this, yes, this is a consequence of your failures. Um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, resume this trial in no less than four weeks. Um, that should give enough time uh, to do what is necessary, especially while this is all very much close to hand and in your minds and understanding. So I am minded to require you to produce an amended uh, <clears throat> defence on this aspect of capital introduction relating to Vingold within seven days of today, together with the explanatory statement required. Um, <clears throat> I would propose to give the claimants a slightly longer period because, of course, you have had all of these documents in your possession and not produced them until now. So, Mrs. B. Joy, I was thinking that an appropriate period for you would be 14 days to respond with a pleading and evidence. Yes, Your Honor, that is acceptable to us. And then we have another seven days for you all to consider the evidence and come prepared to uh, continue the trial. The trial is going to have to resume with the recalling in the middle of Mr. Shakti's evidence of such witnesses who uh, these matters ought to be put to and who wish to respond to it. Uh, looking at the documents, it seems to me that it involves all of your witnesses who have given evidence so far. Um, <clears throat> and that will give a total of a four week period um, after which the case may be relisted at the earliest opportunity. Your Lordship, uh, we can provide this within four days instead of seven days. Uh, right. We, well, if well, we are okay, we can provide it in four days also. Right. Well, uh, that is uh, beneficial, uh, but I will uh, allow Mrs. B. Joy to have 14 days from their yes. production in any event. Yes. Uh, and then as soon as the filings are done, um, I will liaise with the court registry uh, for the availability of the court and myself to sit to continue to hear this trial. Uh, this is most unfortunate, um, but as I've said and prescribed, the cost consequences will lie with the defendants. Uh, I, I'm it's unfortunate that we cannot proceed um, and I'm going to I'm going to adjourn this trial now to a date to be fixed. That will be the formal order uh, following on my ruling just given. Very well. Yes. Thank and you. On behalf of the defendant, I personally apologize for this inconvenience because I was the counsel, though I didn't have the documents, but uh, kindly accept my apologies. Very well. Uh, thank you for that. Um, 
we shall leave it there and resume this trial as soon as we possibly can after completion of the procedural steps I have outlined. Thank you very much. Good day to you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you much, John.